not released the entire manifesto yet. They've only given us a couple of quotes that you can see these couple of paragraphs repeated by everybody in the media, but there's 23 pages there. And what came out of the lawsuit, the depositions that were there, the reasons why they fired him, what we learned from that was that the guy was an adamant Obama supporter, even to the extent that in the last election cycle, he was covering the election with an Obama sticker on his coat. He was written up for that, said, we're not allowed to do that. We want to try to appear at least to be objective. Of course, nobody is objective. That's one of the fallacies of journalism is to deny the fact that you have a point of view. I'd actually them rather, rather that they be honest about it. I'd like to see uh, the ABC anchors and George Stephanopoulos with their Hillary Clinton stickers on so we know who they're lined up with. I'd like to see John Boehner with his corporate logos on him, just like he used at a national car event. Nevertheless, he was written up for that partisanship. He was so heavily into the Obama narrative that once it stepped up, as we saw after the Charleston shooting, that, he said, incentivized him. He said that happened on the 17th of June. On the 19th of June, he ordered his gun. Now, that's important because Terry McAuliffe, who himself is nothing but a Democrat Party operative, this is somebody who, just like Treasury Secretary Liu, has absolutely no clue about what he's doing. He's merely a Democrat operative. Terry McAuliffe, who was a Democrat National Committee chairman, and he was uh, high up in the campaigns of the two Clintons. Bill Clinton, he was a, a assistant campaign manager. He was the campaign manager for Hillary Clinton. That's his sole qualification for being governor. But I guess it's a good qualification because it's a constant campaign. It's about nothing but campaigning. So what is he campaigning for now? He's campaigning for more gun control. In spite of the fact that Vester Flanagan ordered his gun, went through retail channels, would have a background check on him, we have Governor McAuliffe saying that this shows that we need to have universal background checks. And what he means by that is background checks even for private sales, for gun sales. They want to control everything. That's just the next incremental step. That and the race war that we see, this is the fruition of the race war that everybody is putting into. He bought into it totally and he became an Obama killing drone. That's precisely what happened with this. We're going to have more reports. I'm here with Joe Biggs. We're going to be on the radio show today live with Alex Jones with an update. Stay with us. Infowars.com. I'm David Knight. Well, there you go. The drone strikes have begun. Now, stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to have Joe Biggs live on the scene in Virginia where the shooting took place yesterday. And we're also going to look at some new vaccination news that's coming. That's right. They want to push the universal flu shot. All that and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew. Brain force is here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on this the last few months. You probably noticed I've been more crazed, more focused, less brain fog, more energy, more special reports. And it's because of brain force. We kept changing this formula over and over and over again until it became sort of a grand puzzle. For example, the L-theanine inside of it, that is activated by the different compounds in the yerba mate that we put inside of it as well. This just increases the compounds you already have. This is what you're actually designed to run on. Exactly. It's kind of like a car will run on one form of junkie gas, but it runs really good on what it's designed for. And that's the principle of InfoWars Life, as far as I understand, that you've always had, is that it's not about synthetic chemicals and forcing actions. It's about letting your body do its own thing and giving your body the tools it needs to create these different compounds that are super valuable and super beneficial. You will find Brain Force and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. I wanted to bring Weldon Henson in here briefly because we have a great sponsor. Boy, I've sure been enjoying the firearms that I've gotten from them. HDFirearms.com, that's Head Down Firearms. They have super high quality 223s, 308, you name it. It's called 556, technically, in the 223, that are guns that would be $3,000 or $1,500. Guns that would be $1,500 or $900. Well, the important thing to remember is that if you're not in the market to buy a brand new rifle, you have an AR-15, you have an AR-10 platform 308 rifle. They've got everything you need to upgrade it. Buy a new part, buy a new trigger, buy a new muzzle brake, buy a new handrail. It's all an upgrade for your rifle because these are all superior top of the line quality products made in America. Tell folks uh, about their low profile series. Well, this is an important thing to have. This is untraceable. You, anybody can get this kit right here. You don't have to go through a, a federal firearms license place. Uh, you can have it shipped right to your house. This is what the traders have been trying to shut down. Absolutely. So you basically have everything you need besides a lower receiver, because that's what's traceable, that's what's serialized, and that's what the, the federal government's after. But uh, you can get this right here. Get your own lower receiver any way you want. There's different programs. All you got to do is your own research, and you can find out 
how to get a lower receiver so that you can put it on this. Maybe you already have a lower receiver from an AR from way back that you just don't quite use anymore. It's old, something like that. You can throw it on this. You basically have a brand new rifle and you saved money by putting it together yourself and buying this kit right here, which is cheaper than the actual rifle. And they've got the highest quality barrels, the highest quality triggers. We're not just saying that. Go look at the third party reviews. Tell them about the new rifle they're producing that's getting amazing reviews. And then I just got one, this 308. Yes, that is very... Arcadius. Arcadius, that's very exciting. They just came out with their own line of um, AR-10 platforms, which is basically an AR-15, but instead of it being a 5.56, it shoots a 308 round, which I know you personally like shooting a 308. Uh, I like them both. I mean, just to be clear, they've always for years been making this for the big manufacturers, the high end. They're just absolutely. now not private labeling. They're putting out their own guns. Yes. Well, the one they sent you, I'm actually jealous of, is a beautiful gun. Um, it's set up and configured for long-range shooting, marksmanship type things. Just the scope alone is something to <laughs> snuggle with. It, yeah, it's a Vortex 4x16 scope, which you can get a head down as well, their distributor. Um, and and a thing, things for people to remember is that if you want a 308, you don't have to get the 18-inch barrel. You don't have to get the 22-inch barrel. You don't have to get it set up for marksmanship. You can get one with a 16-inch barrel that's set up for more of an assault weapon type you know, uh, uh, configuration. So anything you want, people just call head down. You can get anything you want made there. And any configuration you might want on your rifle, they're, they're able to do that. And they have 100% perfect customer service ratings there. Bottom line, it's not just firearms, a ton of accessories, very affordable, and it supports the info war. If you're not shopping at hdfirearms.com, you're not helping the info war. I mean, this is a win-win. Thank you all for your support. Check them out today. Thank you, Weldon. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew. Coming up, we're going to look at some new vaccine news and some immigration news that's happening in Europe, but also pertains to here. And joining us now from Mineta, Virginia, the site of yesterday's news shooting killings that took place where two people were shot by a disgruntled employee is Joe Biggs joining us via Skype. Joe, uh, I understand you guys just finished a press conference. How did that go? Um, well, it was a press conference with the owner of this facility at the Bridgewater Plaza coming out and saying that, you know, due to the shooting, they're not going to open businesses for another 24 hours out of respect for what's going on. And I'm going to walk around real quick over here to the front. You can see the memorial that they have set up uh, for the victims. Hello. Now, this is what's set up out front right now at this moment in time. I don't know how good you guys can see this, but... No, we can see it. There's flowers. It looks like uh, you are also showing us some footage. It looks like they've replaced floorboards there in the uh, in the area immediately yeah, so, around you. To describe what that looks like. All right. So this is the uh, area, the the path of the killer that uh, Flanagan took. Now, right down this area right here is where they're reporting. You walk down here casually, and uh, just like I heard in the news uh, conference earlier at the actual news station. You know, when you're doing a live feed, you focus on doing the story. You don't really pay attention to people around you because you're always going to get sightseers, people who want to stop in and see what's going on whenever they see someone reporting on the news. So they think that's why that there was really no alarm and why no one really uh, broke what was going on. They didn't look away until the cameraman panned over. And then that's when Mr. Flanagan, he walked up this way, as you can see. And this is the area where the cameraman was standing right here. He had his back to the killer, and this is where you see the chest cam go up, and this is where Allison Parker was standing interviewing, and this is where you see the shooting happen. The camera drops down like so, and everyone was wondering what was going on. Well, this is the area where she took from as she was shot and then panned across and came through here, and now you can see here where they replaced the boards as well. This is where she stopped and laid to rest. On the other, on the underside, on the second floor, the the first floor, I should say, you can see how they replaced more uh, boards where the blood had dripped through. But they've replaced all of this where she laid to rest. And uh, like you said, this is a tragic accident that happened, or a tragic uh, tragic uh, incident that happened by a deranged racist man who decided to go on a spree. Yeah, and you know, people were saying, well, she ran after she was shot. That's uh, the. F it's flight or fight is what it's called. Uh, the mechanism where your brain triggers and you're either going to run for your life or are you going to fight for your life? Well, yeah, I'm she didn't make it that far, it looks like. So uh, eventually, whatever, whatever she was shot with, they said it was a Glock 19. 
it, it took her down not too far from wherever she was initially shot. Yeah, so this is the board. This is right where she was standing. And then right there is where she came to rest. Yeah. So, and they saw, like there's said, one more victim that's still in the hospital. Is that correct? Yeah, that was one of the uh, people who worked for the Chamber of Commerce, the lady. Mm -hmm. She's in critical or stable condition at this point in time. That's all I've heard of. But you now you have everybody across the country, you know, from Piers Morgan over in the UK tooting his gun control horn. I've actually been in tweet battles with him all day where he's calling for more gun control, that uh, Americans need to be tired of senseless gun violence. I told him he needs to be done with a senseless reporting. You know, this guy's a joke. He keeps barking into our affairs. You know, I think he has Second Amendment envy. But this guy is completely out of control, just like much of the mainstream media who are running around and all of a sudden wanting to blame a gun. Now, if I were to lay a gun down here on this table over here to my left and leave it here, people would walk by it all day. Not one person would be shot by it. Not one person would be attacked by that gun. It's not going to get up, grow legs, and start pulling the trigger. It takes a deranged person to pick it up. Now, back in biblical times, they didn't have guns. They still killed people. They use rocks. They use arrows. They use anything they could get their hands on. If you have evil in your heart and you intend on doing harm, you'll figure out a way to do it. So banning guns, gun control is not the answer. Yeah, and we covered an article earlier that we just that Kit Daniels just put up, and it was something you said uh, talking to Alex today about how they found an LGBT flag in his apartment. Therefore, we can we can just go ahead and paint everybody with a broad brush, just like they're doing with anybody who owns a Confederate flag. So talk about that a little bit. Well, exactly. You know, they, they found this racist uh, flag that promotes killing. And like I said, I think they should ban it on all levels. We should not have to see that again. It should be taken down everywhere. Uh, these bakeries that have been forced to make cakes that go with that, they should not have to be forced to make these cakes anymore because it promotes violence, it promotes uh, racism, and it promotes the murder of people. I mean, plain and simply. I mean, if that's how they're going to project it with another flag, let's do the same thing. Let's take a guy who was an African-American who was a homosexual, and let's just paint everyone to be exactly like he is from here on out. And Joe, it's like what you just said. When you paint everybody with one broad brush, good things can't happen, which is why, you know, I understand you're making the point facetiously that, hey, because he had this uh, LGBT flag, we've got to go ahead and ban the flags, anything that, to doing with this. That's not the point here. The point is, when they did it to people who were holding Confederate flags, people who were just celebrating their Southern heritage, they were called racist, they were called violent, and there was this purge of Southern culture and Southern history. And it's wrong to do that. It's wrong to do it on both angles. Don't you agree? Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, you don't see any of us sitting there blaming it on uh, black people as a whole. You don't see us blaming it on uh, gay people as a whole. Like I said, that's purely just a point to make that when something happens, you can't, like you said, paint that broad stroke and say that everyone's that way. I'm my own person. I make my own decisions. I put my own pants on in the morning and I decide whether or not I'm going to do the right thing every day. That's my choice as a human being to do the right thing. This man made wrong decisions throughout his life. He envied people. He was angry. He didn't deal with it the right way. He had anger issues. He was fired. He was let go. And he took that to heart. And instead of seeking help, calling, uh, calming down, cooling off, he then uses the Charleston shooting as a jump off point, buys a gun two days later, and then plots this revenge to come back and get these people for something that he felt some kind of wrong that was done to him. But then again, I'm not going to blame the entire African American community. I'm not going to blame the entire LGBT community. I'm going to blame the individual who made that individual choice to make that bad decision to come out and do something like this. Yeah, I totally agree. I just hope that people understand that, you know, when a crazy white person does something, it's a crazy white person. When it's a crazy black person, it's a crazy black person. And it's not everybody's fault. It's not every gun owner's fault. And it just to, to show this, these background checks don't really work. Almost every mass shooting that has happened, all these guys passed a background check. So either they're not running the system right or the system just doesn't work. I mean, either way, you still have people being able to get guns. And if they made guns illegal, people would still be getting guns. Criminals would still be getting guns. Criminals would still be shooting people. They don't care about the law. There's a law that says you don't rob banks. People still rob banks. I mean, there's laws against drugs, and people still do it every day. People are still dying from heroin. People still die from cocaine overdoses, and these drugs are outlawed. So it doesn't work. You can outlaw things every day. What it comes down to are individual responsibilities and making the right choice or not. And that's what happened. Yeah.
What what is the press's response been to all this? How are they uh, trying to spin this? Are they are they working on trying to make this an anti-gun story? 